MQTT is a message queue telemetry transport. It's a protocol for machine to machine communication where you maybe have something here like a broker, that's our server, and then you have a number of clients that either publish data to that broker or also subscribe to that broker. So we can have any number of clients and they can be bi-directional communication, but the broker acts as the storage for all of that data. And we're gonna set this up in Python, just show a couple examples. It's very popular with Internet of Things. There are other protocols that are more common for things like programmable logic controllers, PLCs, that might use something called Modbus. And there's another video on that that I have. If you want to have more industrial communication or for a distributed control system, um, then something like um, OPC, OPC UA is also very popular. We're also going to do a demonstration on WebSockets that's kind of the underlying layer, one of the underlying layers for even MQTT or other um, types of protocols. So you could either get down to the very bare layers or you could use this abstraction. And MQTT is very nice for doing that with just a few lines of code. You can set up the communication between all of these clients and they can publish and subscribe to values. So let's go ahead and just start with a demonstration of this. We're gonna just start with a, um, in this case, we'll have a broker. Okay, so we want to set this broker up. This is a something where you can store values, you can publish to it. So let's just go ahead and set up this little server. There's a couple different ways of doing it. I'm going to start with just a local server using AMQTT uh, as the package, but there are other ones that are available as well. And I'll show you the mosquito. Um, there's uh, so let's just set this one up with the A. Uh, MQTT. Okay, so we're going to use the AMQTT broker. We're going to import the broker and we'll create a listener by default. This will be our TCP. We'll bind it on port 1883. We'll use the WS. That's our WebSockets MQTT. And we'll bind that one on our local host 127.0.0.1. We'll use port 880. All right, so let me just go ahead and write this down. This is going to be 127.0.0.1, and the port is going to be 880. Okay, so we use that higher number. Um, you know, 80 is for HTTP, HTTPS is 443. We're just going to use uh, one that is used for a lot of these demonstration applications, which is 880. So a higher one that uh, isn't going to conflict with a lot of other services that are on our computer. All right, I'll use a WebSocket. Okay, there's our max connections is 10, so that limits the number of clients that can connect. And just to start, I'm going to uh, the authorization. I'm not going to have a password for this, so I'll allow anonymous. All right, and I'll do topic check. I'll say enabled on that. All right, let's go ahead and create our broker using that configuration that you just saw right above it. And then I'll create a function now that's going to start this broker. And I'll use the async IO package. And if I'm running this as main, then I'll go ahead and get the event loop run until complete. And then I'll run forever. So this will just basically cycle my broker uh, continuously and uh, always listen for subscribe uh, events or subscribe requests and also publish okay, requests as well from clients. So let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to use this one through Anaconda Prompt. So this is going to be through um, a different distribution that I'll use for the client. All right, I'll just change directory to my desktop, and that's where my broker is stored. All right, and I've started the broker. Now I can minimize this. Don't close this right there. 
because you're going to need this to continuously run. You can set it up as a background process if you want to, uh, you know, run a, a server for these uh, as a broker for some of these IoT devices that you want to connect to this broker. OK, so I'm going to minimize that one and then I'm going to publish locally here. OK, so I'm going to import this Paho MQTT client. So I use a MQTT as the broker. The Paho one is also a great client as well. Um, so I'll import TC Lab as my IoT device. And you can use an emulator as a, with a digital twin to that if you don't have a physical device for this application. All right, there's my MQTT broker. And I'll say that's, I'll name my client. And then I'll go on port 880. Now you remember when we set this up, we had 127.0.0.0.0.1. That's our local host, and then port 880. All right, now with our TC lab, and I'll use model here. If you have the physical device, then just go ahead and remove that model right there. All right, lab, I'll set my heater to 70%, and I'll cycle 30 seconds publishing the temperature. All right, and I'll publish it as T1, and I'll just print out that it was published, and I'll sleep for one second. So let's go ahead and open up another terminal here. All right, and I'll do Python and then client. And this one's going to be the local. We'll do the cloud one next. All right, so it's just going to publish those values to this local MQTT broker. All right, and you can just see the values as the heater turns on and it's going to measure the temperature and then push that to the broker. Now, the broker, um, we've shown an example of uh, you know, this with a local host. But one of the powerful things about this is you can connect your devices to the internet and communicate through the cloud or through these online um, platforms. So instead of using 127.0.0.1, we're going to set up a new broker. And this broker, OK, is going to be online. And there's a, uh, several web services that allow you to use online brokers. So all you have to do is connect to the internet, have all your clients connected there, and then they can all connect. Um, so we showed a publish example okay, with one of our clients. Uh, but let's go ahead and just set this up with um, an online one and publish to the cloud, and then also subscribe. OK, so I'm going to go back to this script. I'm going to have a publisher and then a subscriber as well. OK, so let's set up this with uh, this in the cloud. All right, so I'll just open up my script again. Here is our publish. To the cloud, I'm going to take this section that I had before and just replace that with MQTT Eclipse Projects.io and I'll name that still TC Lab. I'll connect to that not through port 880, this will just be through this uh, the default port and I'll connect to it and then publish those values. Okay, now I need to also subscribe, so I'm going to create this subscription now. All right, and I'll create another client to do that. Um, I actually don't need the struct um, package. I'll take that out. Um, and then on message, when I get a message, I want to be able to read that and then convert the payload to a floating point number and print it. All right, I'll have my MQTT broker. That's going to be my cloud based or online based. I'll just name that IoT display. So I'm going to display the values that are being published and on client on message I'll tell it to call this function up there okay and then I'll connect and I'll subscribe to T1 so you can subscribe to any number of values by the 
you know the the name that I published it as I've published T1 okay and then I'll loop forever and there's my client okay so let's go ahead and run all of these okay so I'm gonna open up a couple a new one here all right and okay so now I'm going to change directory to my desktop all right and then I'll have Python and then this one is going to be client and I'll first publish that okay and I also need to set this up as Python client and then this one's going to be my subscribe so I'll go ahead and subscribe to that and just be listening for it and then when it starts publishing you can see I've published it to the cloud and then when that message is received it pushes it back to this subscribe client okay so these these clients could be connected to the internet anywhere in the world and be able to receive those values now if you're working with uh, robot applications uh, a lot of times you don't want to send it out to the internet and then have those values come back you would want to instead um, you know uh, use something like robot operating system uh, so that one is a, an alternative, ROS, Robot Operating System. So that allows you to subscribe and publish just locally to the robot. And that helps with things like computer vision applications, very high speed. Um, it's, a, it's a robot operating system that helps to run the data transfer within the device. Okay, but in this case, this option with MQTT, this is very nice for Internet of Things devices because a lot of times there's latency. Okay, latency is a delay or you have a broken connection and then you reinitialize that connection. All right, and in those cases, uh, this is a very nice option because a lot of that will happen automatically for you. And the clients, as you've seen, are very easy to configure and and run uh, and it allows you to have multiple clients um, all subscribing and publishing simultaneously to this broker now one of the things i don't necessarily like about this is the need to have this broker here in the middle so as you've seen you got to have something running on a dedicated server that handles the data you know, if you're dealing with industrial applications, sometimes you just want to communicate directly from one computer to another. All right, and so that's where things like Modbus, um, where you have uh, maybe computer one, or let's see, computer one, all right, and computer two, and you want to just be able to exchange data at a very high speed, high rate, or maybe you just want the latest value. You don't necessarily want to publish a value and have that be automatically pushed. You just want to be able to store it somewhere or be able to communicate directly. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about Modbus, uh, OPC UA, and also WebSockets as well. But uh, for you know, Internet of Things devices, especially over late, you know, high latency uh, connections, or intermittent connections, this MQTT option is a very nice option for, for those. So that's an overview of MQTT. If you want to get the uh, source code for this, I have a web page here. I'll put this description in the link, and it tells, it gives these uh, source code for the brokers, the clients, and uh, with these examples. All right, and then I also mentioned these other tutorials. You have an overview of the methods and then some additional applications and, and um, here in Modbus and in OPC UA and then also with WebSockets as well. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.